In order to do many physics problems, we need to draw a free body diagram. And before we can draw the free body diagram, we need to identify the types of forces acting on the object. So we always have gravity, because we're on Earth most of the time. So there's the force of gravity, which is our weight, and that's our mass times 9.8 if we're on Earth. And gravity always points straight down, and a lot of times we will just label this FG. Okay, the force of gravity. And you're going to notice that most of our forces begin with F, and then there's a subscript that d identifies what type of force it is. Then we have the normal force, one of the more misunderstood forces. Normal force, normal does not mean ordinary, normal means perpendicular to the surface and in order to have a normal force you need to be on a surface so this block here isn't going to go anywhere if it's sitting on a table we we can set a book on a table and we see that it doesn't go anywhere well like in order for it to not go anywhere the forces acting on it have to be add up to zero so we have gravity there are books still on Earth, so it's there's still gravity. So there has to be a normal force acting on the book that is perpendicular to the surface. And we should find that these two forces are equal to each other most of the time. Now, not all the time. Honors physics, kind of keep that in the back of your mind, because when we start talking about ramps, it's going to be a little bit different. The tension force. The tension force is if you're pulled on, you're being pulled by a string, and it always goes away from the object. So if if you're pulling a a ball and you've got it pulling it along, or you've got a mass here that is hanging. This might be your picture hanging from a wall, and it's attached at one point here, but then that force gets distributed amongst these other two, but notice it's always pointing away from the object. It's always pointing away from the object. We have the friction force, okay? In order to have friction, you got to be kind of touching something, and it always goes in the opposite direction you're moving, okay? So it's going to slow you down. Basically, that's its idea, is it's going to stop you doing from what you're doing. So if I'm here moving to the right, then my friction force is going to be pointed to the left. Notice it's still F with a little F. FF means friction force. So they're all going to be some types of force. Now you don't actually have to be touching something, but even when you're falling through the air, you have friction. It's air resistance. We call it air resistance. But notice we said that a friction force was a resistance to motion. Air resistance is a form of friction. So we can label it either way. We can call it FF, or sometimes we'll call it F air, meaning force of air resistance, air resistance force. But if notice my little guy's falling down, and so if he's falling down, friction's in the opposite direction, and then it's up. Applied force. This is just some sort of generic force. So I'm pushing it. I'm pulling it. I might be pushing down at an angle, but I'm just pushing it, trying to make it go somewhere. Okay? And if I was pushing it, if I'm pushing it off to the right and it's not going anywhere, guess what? There must be another force acting on it. There must be a friction force that's counteracting it to not make it go anywhere. So that's because the ground is still rubbing on it. The ground's not drawn in on this one. But if I push it and it doesn't go anywhere, then there also has to be a friction force that's resisting that motion. Then we have the spring force. Spring force is a force applied by a stretched or compressed rubber band. So if I were to take these little springs here in my pen and push it down, the spring would want to push back on me or if I were I can also pull them up and you know when you click your pen if you're doing click 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 you have to apply a force to make that 
spring inside your pen compressed. I bet you didn't know there was a little spring down there in the bottom of your pen. All right. The most misunderstood force is the net force. That is not a new force. Okay? The net force is not a force in and of itself. It is the sum, the vector sum, of all the forces acting on the object. And this is what we actually see happening. This is, in vector terms, this would be our resultant force. Okay? But we're not going to label it resultant force. We'll call it F net. And we're always going to call it F net to not confuse it with Fn, which was the... Yes, that was our normal force. So we're always going to write F net so that we don't get it confused with our normal force. So if we're going to draw a free, di free body diagram, that shows all the forces acting on an object. So if I have this box that is sitting on a surface, so it's sitting on a surface, and I'm pushing it or pulling it to the right, the, notice my surface is kind of bumpy, so that means it's rough, which means there's a lot of friction. So friction's going to go against the direction that I'm pulling it. I have the force of gravity, because we're still on Earth. And then since it's sitting on a surface, I have a normal force. And then the net force would be the sum of all these forces. So if this was 100 and our friction force was also 100 and our gravitational force was 200 newtons and our normal force was 200 newtons remember it's the vector sum so you add the x's well I've got two x's going in the opposite direction what do I do when they're in the opposite direction do I add them do I subtract them hmm opposite directions opposite signs I'm gonna subtract so I'm going to take 100 minus 100, so my net force in the x direction is 0. In the y direction, again, they're in opposite directions. 200 minus 200. So my net force here is 0 newtons. So it's either sitting still or it's moving at constant speed. We don't know which, which it is doing based on the free body diagram. All right, so here's a sample problem. What's a net force when you have a 20,000 Newton truck with a trailer pulling back on it with 5,000 Newtons and the engine propels it forward with a force of 75 Newtons and it's experiencing 2,000 Newtons of air resistance? Phew! All right, so let's do this one step at a time. Let's draw our truck. Picture's worth a thousand words. That's what our free body diagram is all about. So there's our truck. All right. It's a 20,000 Newton truck. That would be its weight. Okay. So we say FG is equal to 20,000 Newtons. It has a trailer pulling back on it. So the F of the trailer, see how we're just kind of distinguishing what's pulling on it here, is pulling back on it with 5,000 newtons. The engine is going to make it go forward, so F engine is 7,500 newtons. and it's experiencing 2,000 newtons of air resistance. That doesn't really matter where we draw all these air resistance. Okay, so is our truck, our truck's on the ground, right? Okay, it's kind of implied in the problem. Okay, so if the gravitational force is 20,000 newtons, it is also got a normal force of 20,000 newtons. Now these guys are not always equal, but this is the only force that we've got working in the vertical direction.
So the sum of our x's, okay, our x forces, let's circle those. We have the trailer, we have our air resistance, and we have our engine. Those are working in the x direction. So we're going to take our engine, which is making it go forward. The trailer is making it go backwards, so we're going to subtract that because it's in the opposite direction. Air resistance, remember air resistance always res resists our motion, so we're also going to subtract the 2,000 newtons. So in the x direction, we have a net force of two, 500 newtons. I can subtract 500 newtons. Make some room for the y's. In the y direction, okay, in the y direction, we only have our normal force and our gravitational force. And they are also in opposite directions. So 20,000 minus 20,000. So that's zero newtons. So our net force is. 500 newtons to the right. Last one. What's a net force of a 50 kilogram parachuter? So we've got our parachuter and he's jumping out and he has a mass of 15, 50 kilograms. Now remember that's his mass. Is that his weight? Our mass and weight the same thing? Remember from last time? How do we get his weight? Force of gravity is always down. And that's going to equal his mass times 9.8 because we're on Earth. So 50 times 9.8, which is 490 newtons. Okay, so that's the gravitational force. And then we have air resistance. Remember, it's air resistance, so it's going to, obviously, he's parachuting, so he's falling. So this is the direction he's moving. So air resistance is going to be in the opposite direction. That's 200 newtons. So there's our free body diagram. And so to figure out our net force, why didn't I draw a normal force? Why didn't I draw a normal force? I drew a normal force last time. He's falling. Is he touching anything? No. He needs to be touching something in order to have a normal force. So his net force, we only have Y forces here. So it's the 400 newtons, 490 newtons down, minus the 20, 200 newtons up. And so the net force is 290 newtons in the downward direction. All right, there's more fun. It does get more fun than this. Stay tuned. You can do it. All right, bye-bye.